My title today is The Power of Togetherness. Coming together is a big focus of all the Platinum Jubilee celebrations. It is also one of the major themes of the birthday of the Christian Church, which we celebrate today on what is known as Pentecost Sunday, one of the big three festivals of Christianity, along with Christmas and Easter. Unity was central to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago at the time of the Jewish festivals of Shavuot. It says in Acts 2.1, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were together in one place. The first Christians were just a small and insignificant group of disciples in a very, very big Roman world, but their unity with one another and their shared experiences of the Holy Spirit caused them to become a history-shaping movement. Christianity quickly became an example to the world of unity between men and women, old and young, and Jewish and Gentiles who came from very diverse backgrounds and different nations. Briefly today, we will look at some key areas where it is so, so important to be together. And first is they came together in prayers. In Acts 1.14 says they all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. All of the disciples were uh, listed by name in the prayer room and others joined them. Prayer was not a casual thing for the disciples. They were devoted to prayer. They pray every day. So equally, mass our group of disciples all joined together constantly in prayers. Every revival, guys, every revival movement of the Holy Spirit can be traced to small groups of people getting serious about prayers. We too need to rediscover the power of prayers in our individual lives and to learn to pray together as families, as small groups um, in the churches of this land. And second, they came together to experience the power of God. Jesus has trained the disciples for three years, but the discipleship itself did not make uh, them effective. In fact, after over three years training, when the test came as Jesus was arrested, they all ran away, remember? It was only after the discipleship training was activated by the power of the Holy Spirit that they stepped into a new destiny and authority. That is why Jesus spoke to them so clearly in Acts 1, uh, 4 to 5. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you had heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And also in Acts 1, 8 said, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Before they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, the, the disciples were small in numbers, fearful they were and uncertain. After the Holy Spirit came on them, they became confident. They became fruitful and powerful, affected the entire world. A world that was violent, uh, superstitious, uh, sensual and hostile to Christ. In Acts 2, 1, 4 says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be 
tons of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This power was power, was heavenly power. God turned out and it was not a quiet little event. The sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven, directly from heaven and fill the whole house where they were sitting. That is the Bible said. The spirit of Almighty God was in the house in everyone was aware of an awesome power that they had never known before. The greatest powers in all the world is not political. It's no political power or military power or financial power. It is the power of God. This is the real power. When one of America's leading generals of World War II, uh, he met Catherine Kuhlman, a healing evangelist who carried a strong anointing of God's power, he crumpled in a hip. Wow, a former plumber, Smith Wigglesworth, who was used in a remarkable worldwide healing ministry, says that when he received the Holy Spirit, he said, my body became full of light and holy presence, an irresistible power filled me. Today, it is only the supernatural demonstrations of God's power that is going to bring about fundamental change to the UK that I had witnessed in Colombia, where many, many churches have thousands of members. No other agency can bring this about, either in the world or even in the church. It is only when God comes upon ordinary Christians in power who had been seeking him that radical change really came about. It is only when we realize that God alone is our hope, that he is the one that we need and we begin to seek him with all our hearts, that in that moment, he, be, he came in a way that everybody has to take notice of him. Yeah? And my third point is they came together with a shared purpose to spread the good news of Jesus. Yes, they come in uh, together and when the coming of the Holy Spirit was an event of international significance, uh, in Acts 2, 5 says, Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God feeding Jews from every nation under heaven. What amazed everyone, it says in Acts 2, 7, 11, about was that the disciples who were filled with the Holy Spirit were speaking to them in their own languages about the wonders of God. The disciples had a new boldness as we see Peter's bold speech uh, that told in Acts 2.14 and in Acts 4.13. The religious rulers were astonished by the courage of Peter and John. In Acts 4.33 said, with great power, the apostle continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And also in Acts 4.31 says, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly, boldly. Wow, that we need to do today also. And also in Acts 2.41 says, those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their numbers that day. And the verse 47 says, The Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. In Acts 4, 4 says, Many who heard the message believed and the numbers of men grew about to about 5,000. Wow, it's amazing. 
within weeks of the day of Pentecost, the whole city of Jerusalem knew what was going on. And within a generation is what say that they had torn the Roman Empire uh, upside down or rather right side up, which is powerful. The impact of a powerful move of the Holy Spirit stands way beyond the church and effects can be felt for generations and throughout entire societies. The Jewish uh, feats of Pentecost, referring to the end of 50 days of the start of Passover, is also called the feats of harvest and also the day of the first fruits. So, too, when the Holy Spirit comes in power, there is a great harvest of people to the kingdom of God. It's amazing. It's the only way we can see this. As John Wesley famously declared, the world is my parish. This, too, is our motto. We want uh, all people everywhere to know about the love and power of Jesus Christ. And this can happen when we became spiritually hungry and thirsty to really know God ourselves. As Dr. Lloyd Jones said, we must be confident that God has this power today and we must begin to plead and yearn for it for the same power of the Holy Spirit that the first disciples experienced, it is also available for all of us today. In Acts 2.17, Peter said, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. You, your son and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Wow! It's amazing. At the end of this powerful sermon on the day of Pentecost, Peter also says in Acts 2.39, The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, all whom the Lord our God will call. Wow! It's a wonderful promise. Today, on Pentecost Sunday, as we join with three quarters of a billion Christians around the world who had personally experienced the impact of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we need to realize that if we are to see our lives and our world come together, then we too will need to seek and to experience the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Where you are, please close your eyes and ask the Lord to bring His presence, to toss your heart, to give the revelation of the power of unity. If it's your first time maybe watching this program or hear the message of Jesus Christ, please I will guide you in a prayer where you are close your eyes and declare, Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you. I want to receive you from today. I want to experience the power of your Holy Spirit. I want to live a new life, Lord. I receive from you this new opportunity, Lord, to have unity with you, to live in unity, Lord, with you, and to receive the blessings that you conquered for me at the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray this prayer, and you are very welcome to, uh, to our Christian family, and welcome to this church. You can be in contact with us. You can write to us, and we will pray for you, and you can be part of our church and you can be part also of our Thursday prayer meetings and maybe some small groups. And now I would like to pray for all of you that you are watching this program because it's no accident that you are today in this Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. The 
Belver of Christianity. It's wonderful to have this great opportunity to receive today a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Please, with all your heart, I would like to pray for you, to bless you, and to guide you in a prayer. Maybe put your hand in your heart, close your eyes, and I will pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your great love. Thank you because we can call you Father. Thank you, Lord, for every person, Lord, that they came today to watch this program, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you had a big purpose, Lord, with every one of them, Lord. Only, Lord, if we believe, Lord, we will see your blessings. We will see your power working through us, Lord. I pray today, Lord, for every person, Lord, that they will have a great un unity with you. They will be united with you when they pray, when they see for you. They will experience a new power, Lord. Are the disciples in the day of Pentecost, they experience, Lord, the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, please send your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, touch every person, every heart, every mind, Lord. Lord, and please give them freedom where where they are, Lord, you, your word said, Lord, where is the Holy Spirit, there is freedom. And I declare from today, Lord, they will receive not only freedom, they will receive your power. They will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of love, of joy, of peace, every gift. I release over your life today, over your family. Oh Lord, thank you because you are teaching us, Lord, how to pray, how a great power is to pray together also as family, as church, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your church, Lord, for my brothers and sisters, Lord, because together, Lord, we can, Lord, in unity to spread the good news through all the world, Lord. Thank you for this great opportunity, Jesus, to receive the anointing oil today from you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you because you have everything for us and you love us. That is why you call us to be with you, to be part of your family, to receive more from you. And together, Lord, we will see great blessings, great changes in the world, Lord, in the families, in our own lives, in our finance, in the bodies. I pray today, Lord, for healing, Lord, in the bodies, healing in their souls, in their hearts, Lord, through your presence, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Send your Pentecost today to over every life, over every family, Lord, who is watching this program. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen.